Well, we got more wrestling to talk about. Oh, joy. Oh, bliss. Actually, this wasn't bad. It wasn't as bad as it has been. Because we got to see a good match. NXT, from this previous Tuesday night, March the 1st, Braun Steiner and Champa against Rude and Ziggler. And even though we only got a little brief smidgen of a highlight angle for it on Raw, they give them time to work on NXT still. Imagine that. And Michaels, even you can say what you want about Michaels, but he knows how hard it is for guys like this that are this good to have a fucking match in four minutes. He was never part of the shit stain brigade that wanted to keep the matches to five minutes and do 20 minute interviews. But again, they started out the show with this and I even, I liked it and you could see Champa putting it over. He's got personality and of course Steiner has it coming out of his ears, but they came out in the matching Steiner style tights with the double shoulder strap and the, what do you call that? What, what is that design? It's not psychedelic. It's not Paisley. Zubaz? I don't know. I don't know what you call it. Zubaz kind of style. But anyway, here comes Rude and Ziggler, and the baby faces jump started in the aisle way. And in this case, it was called for. It's a grudge match. They've been doing shit to each other. So this wasn't just about, oh, let's just create chaos for no reason. This made sense. It's a grudge match for a reason with grown men fighting each other on a wrestling show. I thought I was in a time machine somehow. At first, the the heels started getting them a little bit, but then Champa came back with a dive that made sense, and the faces roll in, and they're up at the bell. When the bell starts for the, the match, the baby faces are up, the people are up. They've already seen the flurry. They almost missed a double-team move, but Steiner's strength saved it did you see that one where champa was gonna backdrop and boost god i think it was poor ziggler up into what looked like a fireman's carry or something over steiner's shoulders and they were off and steiner just grabbed him in a fucking spine buster and just planted him then they cut uh braun steiner off and got the heat on him and again, Rude and Ziggler are both impeccable in their body language and where they're at in the ring and their work. But also, Steiner has tremendous selling facials. He looks in pain. He looks like he's being put upon. And they got some good heat on him to set up the tag. And God damn it, that's... I love this match, but this was one thing. It was right there. It was right there, and all of them missed it. When they set up the tag, Ziggler misses a splash in the corner, and he takes a heck of a bump, and Steiner comes out and levels Rude with a clothesline, and in doing that, Steiner fell into the neutral corner with both the heels in the ring. All he had to do was pull himself up and let the heels come at him, and he could either duck one or blast the other or duck past both or whatever they're crowding him and he makes a dive to the corner but instead both heels stayed down rude and ziggler both disappointed me on this and steiner just crawled over on his hands and knees and tagged not being molested there was no danger anybody was going to stop him the people still popped because they wanted to see champa come in but he he was served up an opportunity and the heels, all they had to do was get up and crowd him so that he could make a frantic motion for the tag. That would have been a hot tag. <clears throat> I do this every week. Anyway, uh, Champa then makes a great comeback, and they stop him, and they go to the break because they're giving him some time. They come back from the break. There's heat on Champa, and he's fighting back, and he boomerangs Ziggler over the top to the floor. And almost got to the tag, but Rude was over there and jerked Steiner off the apron and wiped him out into the front row. So then they go two on one on Champa. And Steiner had to sell for a little bit long over there in the front row, but finally, Champa gives Rude a, a real nice, pretty leaping knee lift and gets an opening. And Ziggler tries to stop him for the tag, but he kicks Ziggler off, and then he hits a hot tag. 
So Steiner got the hot tag and the people blew. Just instead of turning over and just making a blase tag after he blistered Rude, Ziggler came in and tried to pull him back, and it was a kickoff and a tag right there. You didn't expect it. You didn't see it coming. Boom, that's a hot tag. And Steiner makes a big comeback. The belly to bellies, the clothesline, spear on fucking Ziggler. Poor Dolph, goddamn. He was getting planted in this thing. Tag Champa hit the Steiner Bulldog off the top. One, two, Rude makes a save. And a row. What a match. And they did a couple back and forth. And finally, Champa hits his finish on Ziggler. Boom, one, two, three. This was a wrestling match. And it was the first 20 minutes of the show. And I could have watched another 20 minutes of it. Because it didn't get old. Like that blase bullshit the previous night on Raw did with mismatched people, green talent, and bad promo material. This, uh, this was the match probably of the, of the week, I would say. Uh, but, you know, and again, these are guys that Rude and Ziggler were on their main roster, and they waste them. What'd you think? I missed NXT this week. Well, Glorioski, wouldn't you know who won the pony? So I've set all that up for you to glowingly <laughs> agree with me. Hey, I'm not Pat McAfee over here. All right. Was well, Nikita case, on? Was Nikita on this week? Well, wait a minute. We're going to get there. Okay. So that was the first 20 minutes of the show. We're looking good so far. And then Valter has a promo. He's going to have a match tonight with Solo Sikoa. And I honestly think they ought to, I'm not saying this for the talking because he can't talk, uh, because Walter can talk and he's got the accent, but I wish that somehow Lesnar's going to retire again. Um, You know, uh, Paul E is, you know, he's done as much for Reigns as he can do. They've put him with other people in the past. I'd love to see Paul E with Valter because then the matches and the creative would match the guy's talent. Because Paul would have the power to get the things done that need done with Valter. But at some point, but that probably will never happen. L.A. Knight was in the ring, starts a live interview. All the talent in the world said the name Grayson Waller, and I hit the fast forward. Uh, you'll be sorry to know that two of the girls, Brian, on NXT, old Persia and Indy, still have issues over their, their fellers. They're having, having men issues. <laughs> A match in the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Can't believe they're allowed to say his name in this context. Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai against Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada. And yes, Wendy Chu did wrestle in the Dusty Rhodes Classic in pajamas and furry bunny slippers. Uh, they did a segment where they sold the Madison Square Garden event on NXT, so they are desperate to get some people in that building. They're going to run Madison Square Garden, and they're not going to outdraw <laughs> two of my OVW events on paid attendance in, in the Louisville Gardens. See, they should have come to Louisville. We turn out for things. Brian, you missed Lash Legend versus Amari Miller. I'm not exactly sure as I close my eyes and think of the show if I know which... I'm not sure who those two are. Lash Legend was the one... She's about six feet tall and about 200 pounds. Oh, those she are looks women. Like, she oh. looks like Wendy Williams. She looks like if Wendy Williams and Raka Khan had a, had a baby. And she was the one that was going to do the talk show on NXT lashing out with lash and they did one and it stunk so bad i don't think they ever did another one but she has fake eyelashes on that are about three inches long so you can tell who she is versus the other one and i apologize to the AEW women's roster because this looked like a fantasy camp pro wrestling demonstration where part of it was fake and part of it was so stiff a shoot would have been easier 
It was it was both. And then I swear to God, remember Briggs and Stratton, the poor Southern boys that are out of place there and they're burying them by making them look like clueless idiots to appeal to an eight-year-old demographic. They actually went through a bit with Briggs and Stratton with old Carmen Electra where Stratton is not even tricked into, but of his own volition just because of the way the conversation went, screamed out and was proud to admit out loud that he had never been with a woman. Don't don't ask what the buildup was. It's not worth it. They want him to connect with the audience. Well, there you go. Uh, we know what the audience is now. Volter versus Solo Sikoa. This you actually missed and you shouldn't have. Because remember last week we said the, the Samoan guy knocked Valter out with one kick, and that shouldn't have happened. But they redeemed themselves here because Solo Sokoa's gimmick is he's a street fighter, and he's from the streets, blah, 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 and he's Samoan, etc., but still it's Valter. And so this match was done where Valter started hot and manhandled him and was aggressive and hitting those chops and had a great menacing attitude and a heel demeanor and was a bully. And every time Sokoa would fight from underneath and fight up, he'd get leveled again. And then Valter would taunt him, get up, get up. But he, the Solo would keep fighting and trying to get out from under. It was great stuff. It kept you interested. And Valter, as I've said, nobody I don't think works a match more in keeping with what he should be doing in his style than Valter does. He works his, his gimmick is him and he works it perfectly. And finally, Sokoa had eaten a chop and forearms and he's getting pissed facially and he fights back, finally hits a spin kick. Valter takes a bump. And then Sokoa hits the Samoan drop. Valter rolls to the floor. Sokoa hits a splash off the apron onto the floor. Boom. Those crazy Samoans I used to see. Goddamn, who was the first one? They've all done it. One of the members of the Samoan SWAT team, Fatu, he did it back in the late 80s. Anyway, um, he immediately rolls Valter in, hits a super kick, goes for a two count. But he's trying to win now that he's got the opportunity. and. Sokoa, you can tell, is still a bit green, and he loses his intensity on his face and or after he's hit something, one-two kick out, he'll get up, he'll wander around for a second. He'll take unnecessary steps and then realize what he's doing. That's just inexperience. That'll, that'll be fine. Solo misses a splash off the top. Volter gets a rear choke, pulls him into a power bomb. And again, one, two, three. Great match, and Valter is perfect in matches with everything that's up to him. He can't control the finishes that are called or who he's put in to work with, and he's six mans or... What he's called? What he's called, or in a lot of cases, what he's supposed to be saying, but when he gets in the ring in a single match with anybody, he gets fucking over. The stuff that the writers can't fucking fuck up is his match. So that that was tremendous. Um, and then they followed that up with Persia, who is still hugging on to Indy's rotten ex-boyfriend, Duke. And guess what, Brian? Dexter will not text Indy back, and she's so upset about it. Oh, I need you. Text me back. I threw up on the page writing what I just wrote. And then John Wayne Gacy stooge Harlan Sanders beat some guy up. And then another dusty classic match with Raquel and Cora versus I swear, I swear I ain't kidding, Ulisa Leon and Valentina Faraz. I'm glad they gave me everyone real names again. 
And they were dressed up like the illegitimate offspring of Carmen Miranda. Google her, kids. It'll be hilarious. And then after that match, you'll never guess what happened next, Brian. Oh, I don't know. Some girls got in a fight backstage. That's never happened before on a wrestling program. And then Andre Chase. Remember poor Andre? Used to be one of the Bravado brothers in Ring of Honor. But now they're making him, and this, my God, he was 23, 24 years old 12 years ago, so he's in his mid-30s, but he's wearing a Letterman sweater from a fake college that he supposedly runs, and he's got a student with him, and he was fighting Von Wagner, and he wrestles in the sweater, and the fucking, they come out with the flags of the university. It's impossible taking this seriously. Von Wagner won. Then, they did a big package on, no pun intended, on Nikita Lyons breaking the internet. And they had all of the tweets and all of the things pop up, but it was so fast you couldn't read them. But it, they took tweets of people that said, oh, Nikita's so great, and her debut was so great, and blah, blah, blah. And then they showed a pre-taped promo with her. And since I have no frame of reference, I've never seen her before do anything, I still have hope, except they made her, either they made her or this is what she does. She memorized a statement and read it like she was being held at gunpoint by terrorists, like all the rest of them do. And it was memorized, and there wasn't one fumfer, and there was no emotion in it whatsoever. So are they making her do this? Does she have the ability to speak on her own naturally and normally? And interestingly, we will find out. But it certainly seems that visually she has tickled a lot of people's fancy. So that's what you missed on Nikita. And then the main event was for the North American title, Carmelo and Trick against Pete Dunne. And they started this match at six minutes till 10 and went two minutes and then went to the commercial break at four minutes till the top of the hour. And I guess they were going to fucking go over, but I don't care about either of these people. They take, take nice bumps. I didn't stick with the overrun. And that was NXT. All right. Well, I'll see if there's anything that makes me go back to my DVR to see what I missed. I want to see Von Wagner in the ring, actually. Why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, he looks like such a monster. I want to see how he works. Well, we've seen him work a time or two. He, he ain't rotten. He's green. The way he looks, he should work like the monster in L.A., just like, just like storm around the ring. Actually, yeah, they, well, they, they should have made him the mummy, except they wouldn't have had to fucking wrap up his face. They could have just put some modeled makeup on it, and it would have been mummy face, and he could have the metal bar in his arm and do the sledgehammer. And, well, what have you got up your sleeve this week on the Arcadian Vanguard Network, Mr. Last? Another action-packed week on the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network. Check out all the shows and get information on Twitter at Super Podcast, or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Arcadian Vanguard. A few notes. The latest episode of Shut Up and Wrestle with Brian Solomon is out right now at suawpod.com, or of course, available wherever you find your favorite podcasts. This week's guest, Les Thatcher. Hear a fun historical talk with Brian Solomon and Les Thatcher. Hear it today. Once again, suawpod.com or search for Shut Up and Wrestle with Brian Solomon wherever you find your favorite podcasts. How many words does Brian get in edgewise with Uncle Les? Oh, I'm sure he gets in plenty of words, but uh, it's also a very, very interesting conversation. I think everyone should check it out. Lots of words. <laughs> words and phrases! Of course, this week on Stick to Wrestling with John McAdam, another big episode where John and his guest Kyle Lewis review WrestleMania 8. The end of the original era of Hulkamania. Hogan versus Sid. Why didn't we get Ric Flair versus Hogan? Bret Hart versus Roddy Piper. Hear all about that and so much more 
at mcadampod.com or search for Stick to Wrestling with John McAdam wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And of course, the 605 Super Podcast, The Membership! I wish I could be announcing opening day Star Wars, but the opening day of the baseball season has been delayed by this lockout and everything going on. I heard about that. But go through the archive today at 605pod.com or look for the 605 Super Podcast wherever you find your favorite podcasts. The Mothership. Ow. And good day to you, sir.